Android Q is finally here. Well, sort of. Google kind of announced it a couple months ago, but now we're on beta 3 with a lot more user-facing updates that we can really talk about. They announced it at Google I.O. 2019, so let's take a look at some of the coolest features. So one of the biggest user-facing changes that you'll see with Android Q comes with how you navigate it. Now, of course, you have to go to the Settings app and toggle this on, but as you can see, I've already toggled it on because you're no longer getting that pill-shaped home button. Instead, it's something more like an iPhone 10, where you can get this long, elongated nav bar over here, and you can swipe up to go to the app drawer. But if you're in an app like, say, Google Maps, you can swipe up again and go home and press and hold to sort of see your recent apps and scroll through it. So how do you go back? The famous back button is no longer there. Instead, now you have to go back by swiping from the side of the screen. And this actually works with multiple sides. So you can either do the right side or the left side, and you can kind of see that little arrow that pops up when you do the action. So this sort of takes some time to get used to for anyone. I'm still getting used to it, but I definitely like it over the gesture navigation system that Google introduced with Android P. It just, again, will take some time to get used to it. Another big user-facing change is dark theme. Now, a lot of people have been asking for a dark theme for the longest time, and Google has finally baked it into the system settings. All you have to do is go to display and toggle it on, and this is actually a true OLED black experience. You're not getting a weird gray-esque that kind of theme. And you can see how everything is sort of changed to this darker theme. The app drawer, the system settings over here, they're all that AMOLED dark black, even these notifications. And even some apps will enable this as well. For example, Google Photos has this grayish darker theme as opposed to what you get with normal Google Photos, which is more white and Google said it will add more apps to support this dark theme as well, and other developers can do that as well. Another cool feature that it may not affect most people is called live captions, and this is something that's not available in the beta just yet, but you can sort of see glimpses of it over here, captions. When you turn it on, essentially Google is using on-device machine learning to play captions on the screen from any video you see, whatever app you're in, whether you're looking at a video on your Google Photos or whether you're scrolling Instagram and running to a video. And this, these real-time captions seem to be very accurate based on the demos we saw in Google I.O., but it's something that you'll be able to press the volume rocker, a button will be here to turn them on and you can just float them around these captions and they will just pick up what's happening in the video and just tell you whenever someone speaks exactly what they're saying. So it's a great accessibility feature, it might even be useful for other people that don't really think they might need to use it, but it's something that again we'll have to take a closer look at when it's finally available in the final version of Android Q. Now, Android Q's live caption feature, the cool thing about it is when I say on device, it really is on device. You don't need an internet connection for it to work, and that's the beauty of a lot of features that Android Q is bringing with machine learning. Android Q also natively supports foldable phones, so as we see more foldable phones coming out, you're going to see better support for them. And one feature in particular that Google mentioned was screen continuity. Now this is something Samsung showed us with the Galaxy Fold. It was called app continuity then. Essentially with the main screen on the front, if you open an app, you can open the phone up and the app will continue to exactly where you were on the bigger screen unfolded. So that's just one of the features that foldable support in Android Q brings us. The others include resizing apps and such. And that basically we'll see more of when we get Android Q on a foldable phone. There's also native support for 5G with Android Q, and that's again something we'll have to see as we see Android Q running on 5G devices later this year. One thing that's disappointing to see in Android Q is that we're losing Android Beam. Now, you might not have heard of this before, but Android Beam has been something that's been around since Android Jelly Bean a couple of years ago. So it's basically a system that allowed you to tap two Android phones together and you were able to send files, photos, pretty, pretty much instantaneously. It would just sort of didn't even require an inter internet connection. So you could be in the subway where there's no connection and tap two of these phones together to send a photo. Uh, it was just sort of a handy way of transferring some files, and it was also used previously as a way to set up new phones by just tapping your old phone to the new one. That just is no longer going to be the case in Android Q. As you can see, this is a phone running Android 
uh, Pi, and you can see the Android Beam feature here, and in the same system settings, you can see that's gone in Android Q. So uh, it's probably not a, a very popular feature in the first place. Not a lot of people really knew about it, but it's still disappointing to see it go away for the people that did use it. There's two new hubs in the settings menu, privacy and location. The privacy menu gives you access to permissions manager, so you can click on it and see what apps have different types of permissions, and then go in there and customize that. You can see things like showing passwords, whether you want to see not notification content on the lock screen, as well as access other things like the autofill service, Google's location history, and more. The location hub is basically a way to, for you to finally see exactly what apps are using your location, turn it off completely, and you can even see what apps are using it it does take a while to sort of preload, but when it does, it says apps with this permission can access this device's location. And if you then see, hey, I don't really want uh, this particular app, like maybe Facebook, to access my location, now you get three different types of prompts. You can either allow it all the time, allow only when the app is being in use, or deny it completely. So this is probably the middle one, is probably the one you'll probably want to use most often, but of course it depends on the app and whether you want them to have your location data. There's also now an improvement to smart replies. Now we can't really see it here. We've been trying to get smart replies to show up, but they haven't just yet. I'm not sure whether this is just something because of the beta or if it'll come up later on. Uh, but say someone messages you, Smart Reply currently works with things like Android Messages and a few other apps, but now Smart Reply will work system-wide on all messaging apps. So whether you're using WhatsApp, Viber, uh, you know, whatever you're really using, you're going to be able to see quick options that use on-device machine learning to learn the types of responses you might send. So if, since this person said, hey, you might get some Smart Reply options like, hey, hi, hello, and that might be tailored to the types of greetings you typically say. So you might even say, what's up? Another cool feature that's gonna come in Android Q is you'll get direct actions that you might be able to just tap into with one tap. So if, for example, someone sends you an address, you might be able to tap on it and jump directly into Google Maps instead of having to copy the address and paste it in Google Maps. Another cool feature that is really kind of hard to show, but it's something that might just benefit in the next two to three years, is that Android can now deliver faster security updates, so you don't need to get a system update anymore for them. Basically with Android Q, Google is issuing these updates sort of like an app update where it can sort of be downloaded in the background and you don't need to reboot your phone. Now that's not something that you might see happen immediately, it's just something that might benefit you in the long run. Digital well-being is also getting a bit of a revamp. Essentially, they're gonna add parental controls from Google's Family Link app in here. So you're gonna be able to control app-specific time limits, as well as things like bonus time to give kids extra time with apps if they've done their chores or something like that. Another cool feature in digital well-being is focus mode, where you can basically select certain apps to not disturb you at a given time if you, say, are at home and you don't want your work-related apps to bother you, rather than turning on a overarching do not disturb mode. So those are just some of the biggest changes that we can show you right now in Android Q. There's a lot of other things that are happening under the hood, but Android Q is probably coming out around August, which is basically what Google has done historically with previous betas. We're on beta three right now, so there's gonna be a beta four and a beta five that'll probably come out in the months until August. Now, we also don't know what Android Q will be called. You know, Google usually goes for a dessert theme. So for last year it was pie, before that it was marshmallow and Oreo. So you get these dessert themes. So Q, I don't really know how many desserts there are with Q. Maybe you do, so let us know in the comments. And if that's the case, we'll find out again in August what this dessert theme name will be. There's also 21 devices that will be available to use Android Q right now from 13 different brands ranging from HMD's Nokia to OnePlus. So you're basically going to be able to try out Android Q on a different variety of phones now, so that's always a good thing. 